So everybody, today is kind of a sad day on the Mueller Munch. Uh, yeah, this is probably the last time I'm going to be able to go to my parents' house, my childhood house, and because uh, we sold it. So come with me. It's a, it's a weird little story of uh, my family's life, not Kristen's, but my family. Um, I grew up in a Navy family. My dad was a Navy officer uh, for almost 30 years. Um, the man was on board ship a lot. Um, the man would, uh, he, he, he was a commander up in Iceland for three years. We didn't see him for three years. Um, he did all this secret squirrel stuff with uh, NASA when it very first began. When my dad retired, he retired to a place that he was very comfortable with because he had some family property up in Lake County, California, specifically up in Lakeport. Um, he uh, bought a home up there in the early 70s and I was about, I don't know how old I was, but uh, I was in fifth grade is when I went there. So because the property has been vacant, you know, we, we literally have to sell it. And it's the last day that I'm going to be able to get up there because in a few days the house closes to a couple uh, who bought it up in Washington. And boy, I really hope they enjoy it and get the same memories that that we had up there. It was just fun. It was my childhood home, mostly. So this was our lives for like 50 years. And that mountain, actually it's not a mountain, that's literally a volcano, inactive, but it's uh, Mount Kanakdai. But that peers over Clear Lake. And this is where my parents settled back in the early 70s and I grew up. So the road I'm on is one you would definitely not want to take with your RV. Um, this thing has had more accidents with big semi rigs trying to uh, cheat the area. It's a, it's kind of a shortcut. Everybody who lives up here kind of knows it. It's called Hoplin, and it's literally a uh, very narrow and squirrely road. And it's been around for ages, but it's a way that people can cut through, and it cuts about 30 miles off the trip to get out to Lake County. But you don't want to take an RV. You definitely don't want to take a semi. There's been lots of people that have tried and have gone over the side, gone in ditches, and it's not pleasant because if something like that happens, this road gets cut off really easily. Some of you may know that I was a cop for a majority of my life. Um, behind you, in this building, yeah, in that building there, that was the original police department of Lakeport for years. And they've uh, since moved the building, but that's where I started my law enforcement career, it was right there in that goofy little building. And it was 10 cops and I was a cadet. I was 15 at the time and we're talking like what 1979-1980 and uh, it was a great place to work and uh, people that worked there with us were just outstanding cops. You know we've been here a long time and our family grew up here and that was our family church. Uh, I was an altar boy at this place. My mom and dad were married in this church. When I was a kid too, the weird little part, and apparently they don't do this now, but back when I was a kid, all the churches were always unlocked. 
That means you can go in at like two o'clock in the morning in a church. And uh, they don't do that now. Times have changed, but um, yeah, we've got a lot of history here in Lakeport. Yeah, this was a great town to grow up in as a kid. I mean, you walked to school, we skateboarded downtown, we rode our bicycles everywhere. Um, you know, there's, there was, it, it's still a small town. It's a town of about 5,000 people. Um, but everybody still is nice. Everybody still waves. Everybody seems to know everybody. You meet everybody at the grocery store, at church. Um, it was just a great place to grow up. I had so many friends that lived in these neighborhoods um, and they grew up here as well. And everybody moves on in life. That's just kind of how it is. But our time here is coming to an end and I kind of wanted to document the fact that that's our time. Our time has come to an end in being a Lake County resident. We all used to soapbox race, not me specifically, but I used to be the guy at the bottom of the hill that caught everybody that came down the hill. But this was the hill that everybody soapbox raced on. And this was our soapbox hill. And it was a great hill. Most of my life, I was into motorcycles and cars, still am. And when I was a kid, this was an area where we would sneak down and uh, trespass around air and <laughs> the police would chase us off on our motorcycles. But we all ended up at the high school because the high school was kind of the cool place to be. Um, you know, because it had baseball fields and all kinds of stuff. It was like a big park. Yeah, I walked to school through the snow and the sleet and the hail. It, but my house was literally like a mile away, a mile and a half away. And I used to walk to this school. And so this was a uh, seventh and eighth grade classrooms are up here. Five classrooms. <laughs> Tells you how, how big of a school we have. I think our graduating class in high school was around 90. <laughs> so that's why we're all really good friends. But this is Terrace School. Well, this is elementary school and a middle school all rolled into one. Again, you know, small town stuff. But yeah, no, I played on these. I, you know, I played, well, there's a girl. <laughs> I played basketball and hopscotch. I mean, the, you know, the stuff that you did when you're a kid, but now I'm an old guy. You know, I ate lunches on these lawns, I had conversations, I met girls. That's kind of what you did when you were a kid. I mean, growing up here was great. You can still leave your car unlocked, windows down. It's uh, just memories pouring back. We did not have that much solar. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's like a mountain of solar. This building here was not even here at all. This was literally nothing. This building here, named the Marge Alexei Center, was named after my grandma's neighbor. Her husband ran the local burger shop and Joanne and Jimmy were their kids and I went to school with them. So this is where, when I went to high school, that all the cool kids hang out. We parked our cars here, we ate lunch here, we told stories here, we took pictures. This was a fun high school. That's right, I'm cleaning up after you guys. I'm not gonna let my school look bad. So yeah, this was our gym and cafeteria. Um, literally, it's like a, just a big, just a square building and that's where our gym and our cafeteria was. But um, some of the stuff that they've done lately to the school is kind of cool. I mean, you saw all the old flags hanging on the wall. <laughs> A lot of those were from our era. The tradition carries on. Fun stuff, and we just had a ball. We enjoyed everybody. Everybody enjoyed everybody. You know what the weird part is, is that we learned is all the girls, they never dated us. They dated the out-of-town guys. Oh man, did we hate that. But they explained it to us later in life. They're going, you know, we've known you guys all your lives. It'd be like dating our brother. Ooh, I get it now. Best math teacher's room right here. Mr. Smith, <laughs> and, and the funny part about it, he's still a Facebook friend and he is just as comical as he was then. It was my locker and my locker mate, who was literally my locker mate for life, because uh, they went alphabetically. 
Stephanie, there's our lockers. You know, it's fun coming back to a school that you went and you have all these memories with. It just brings back everything like, oh, I remember that. And oh yeah, I remember what we did behind that tree. And oh yeah, that's right. That's where we were uh, a little intoxicated at one time. Shh, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. We used to have open header days. That's right, we'd all come to school with our cars and the exhausts all disconnected from the headers. And man, it was loud and some cars barely ran, but man, we had a ball at the school and everybody was understanding and everybody wasn't so judging and divi you know, divisive. We had fun and it was all meant to be fun. Nobody was, uh, you know, a vandalizer or a, you know, a, a fighter or something like that. But. That's what we did. And uh, you know, we miss those days being older now, but you know, our world has definitely changed and more restrictions have come with all the stupid stuff we probably did when we were kids. That's the reason that uh, a lot of those rules are put into place. So, so for all you future guys that want to do a open header day, I'm sorry. At any rate, yeah, this is, this is my parents' house. Um, it's where I grew up. That, that upstairs there is my, was my sister and brother's room and then it eventually, turned into my room um yeah it's uh it's the house is looking really pretty kind of ragged nowadays um but we sold it and uh, we used to have a pool back here we had to fill it in um but man the views from up here i mean we we listened to boat races and we could see a little bit of everything all through this backyard you know with any house you're gonna have memories but eventually you have to kind of let those things go um, and we're to that point in our lives where we have to let this one go. And it's tough. I mean, this was the, again, this is the house that I grew up in. So the house where my, my parents settled and retired. This was the house that my dad thought that uh, would be the last place that he'd ever buy. So here I am shutting the door to my past and looking for the present. So as I leave my parents' old house, just all kinds of emotions just start dwelling up. But we hope the family that has bought this house has the same memories and the same good luck and the, just is able to build on what my dad did from his original dream of having this house for the rest of his life. So good luck to the new owners, good, uh, good riddance to the past, and hello future. White House, you've been an inspiration and fun. Last time I go down my driveway, or at least my parents' driveway. <laughs>